Hey everyone, Jordan here. Today we are back with another preview for the Z890 chipset. We've got the Z890 Aorus Elite Wi-Fi 7 here. I expect we'll see some similarities to the X870E that we looked at recently as well. But let's just crack on with this one and get into the box. Uh, a little bit of protective packaging. The board itself and then underneath we've got a more single installation guide. Just a very quick, thin, quick start guide. A couple of SAS cables, one of which is right angled. We have got all the little quick connectors so you can put all your front panel onto one block and then plug that in all in one go. And then we have got the antennas with a little quick release connector on the end and it is also magnetic as well. It's a little bit lighter on the accessories but this will be one of the cheaper boards in the Z890 lineup so it's understandable. So then here we have the Z890 Elite Wi-Fi 7. So it looks very silvery on some parts in comparison to the X870 that we looked at. That was more kind of stealthy. This has got a few more different accents, so different alternative colours there. I think Aorus have launched about 17, it might even be 19 boards for Z890. So if this colour theme isn't up your street, I'm sure you'll be able to find one that is. Let's get a little bit of an up closer look at the MOSFETs and chokes. This has got a 16 plus 1 plus 2 digital phase VRM. This I think will be a really good board for the Ultra 7, and that's one that I expect I'll probably use it with in the future. Quick look on the back as well before we go around the board. We have got the armoured slot there for our first PCIe slot, but we'll talk more about that in a minute. No back plate or anything, but you wouldn't see it when it's in the case. Plus it does save cost. So let's have a look around the board. On the top left, we have got two 8-pin EPS connectors. They're not shielded, but they have got solid pins. There's also a System Fan 3 4-pin header tucked in the corner there. I don't know if you can quite see that little sneaky header there. Going along, we have got another two 4-pin. We've got a CPU optional and a CPU fan. Then there's a 5 volt addressable 3 pin RGB. We've got a few different options here, nice to see. We've got a power button, reset. QF Plus makes me think like quick flash, so maybe you'll be able to update your boss with that button quite easily. We've then got a postcode reader, always lovely to see those. Then our usual 24 pin for power. A fan 4, that's for a pump 4 pin header. And we've got a Type C connector at 10 gigabits per second. On the right angle, we have got an HDMI port if you want to use an internal screen in your case, easily connect into there rather than having to go around the back. Then we have our USB 3 header, that's going to be a 5 gigabit port. There's four SATA 6 gigabit ports. And then on the bottom right, our usual front panel connectors, we've then got another two 4 pin headers. We've got a total of six 4 pin headers on this board. Generally see around seven, so one less, but you can easily split them off with adapters if you need them. Two USB 2 ports. We've got a standard 12 volt RGB and then also two more 3 pin 5 volt RGBs. Then the bottom left, we have got our front panel audio header. This is using the Realtek ALC1220 codec. So back up to the socket, 1851. So of course, the new Ultra 200 series CPUs. And then to the right, we have got our dim slots. This will support up to 256 gigabytes at the time of filming. You might see an upgrade over time, but that's a crazy amount anyway. I can't see anyone really needing any more than that. And then also up to 8800 mega transfers per second. So blazingly fast on XMP. You can do it manually if you'd like to as well. And then this also has D5 Bionic Corsa, which is their software that helps maximize the performance of the DDR5. So going down to our slots and expansion, the top one we have the easy release latch, very quick to take that off. There's a 110 mil thermal pad on there, and then you can support up to 110 mil Gen 5 drive on that top slot. We've also got the quick release latches on there as well. Very easy to just to slot that back down and then clip that back in. Under that, we have got our PCIe Gen 5 X16 slot. It also is a quick release latch on there as well. Always a very handy thing to have if you're doing a lot of testing. We have got another little quick release for our additional M.2 drives further down. You can do three Gen 4 drives there up to 110 mil, so that's one Gen 5 up to 110 and three Gen 4 up to 110 on this board. Now further below, we have got an additional two Gen 4 X16 PCIe slots. These are wide X4 though, but perfectly good enough for sound cards, capture cards, and network cards. For the rear IO, we have got four USB 2 ports. The red ports are USB 3.2 Gen 2, so 10 gigabits per second. We've then got a display port underneath, perfect if you can use a K-series processor for a bit of troubleshooting. We then have a Thunderbolt Type-C header. There's the four blue USB ports. These are 3.2, so five gigabits per second. We then have the two and a half gig LAN, our Wi-Fi antenna points, a line out, microphone and finally an SP diff. So there we go, that was a look at the first Aorus board for the Z890 platform, the Elite Wi-Fi 7. Let me know what you think about it in the comments. I've actually managed to find some pricing on this before the embargo, so I'm not actually breaking anything because it is publicly available information. 299 is what Scan will be selling it for, so I don't think that's too bad for 
the features. I will be using this in a build as well very soon, so get subscribed and ding the bell so you didn't miss that. But let me know what you think about it. I will put the links in the description box when it is available. I will also have some other previews coming out over the next few days. I've got a white board from Morris to show you as well. And then we have got another one from MSI. Other stuff to come as well, loads of stuff in the works. So just um, stay tuned for other videos. We've got other stuff apart from these new launches as well. Some pretty cool things to show you. So yes, thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you to Oris for sending this out for me to look at. I'll see you all in the next one.